Hey, Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Wednesday. Well, as you can probably tell, I'm not in my living room for this episode. In fact, I'm right here in the Granger Sky Theater at the Adler Planetarium. Sure feels good to be back. And better still, you can join me here. The Adler is excited to be offering full dome experiences on Saturdays and Sundays through the end of August. We're showing two shows. One of them is Skywatch Live, which is kind of like an extended Skywatch Wednesday, except you're under the Planetarium Dome, looking around you at the beautiful sights in the sky, just like you are when you're actually out there stargazing. We'll transport you out of the light-polluted skies of Chicago into a truly dark sky. We're also showing our most recent Full Dome production, Imagine the Moon, which looks at how people have thought about the moon through history, where it came from, how to get there, and what its future holds for humanity. So please join us in person if you can. You can find tickets online at adlerplanetarium.org. Well, today's episode, we're going to be continuing to talk about the summer sky. Now, this is one of my favorite times of the year to go stargazing, and I think one of the reasons for that is the nice weather. The evenings in the summer are just pleasant to be out in. In the wintertime, sure, the sun sets a lot earlier, you can get a dark sky maybe right after dinner. But if you're out there for 10, 15 minutes in the freezing cold, it can start to wear on you a little bit. In the summertime, though, you get out there maybe a little bit later in the night once it's finally dark. But you might find yourself just getting lost in the sky. Plenty of amazing things to be seen. So let's begin tonight about an hour and a half after sunset. We're looking south-southeast, and we see here two classic zodiac constellations, Scorpius and Sagittarius. These two never get very high in the sky, as seen from the mid-northern latitudes, but they are bright enough and recognizable enough to spot and identify even from light-polluted skies like Chicago. The easiest of the stars to spot is Antares, that marks the heart of Scorpius the Scorpion. Now, Antares is quite bright, but what really catches the eye is its color. The reddish-orange color is what gives the star Antares its name. Ant Aries, the rival of Mars. Now, Mars is on its way out of the evening sky right now, but you might remember late nights last summer when you could see a very bright Mars and Antares in the sky at the same time. When Mars is very bright, they look almost identical. Now, in the case of Mars, you're seeing reflected sunlight off the rusty red soil of Mars. In the case of Antares, though, it's a star. It's shining in and of itself. So you're getting a clue in that color to the star's temperature. Antares is cooler than the blue or the white stars that we see elsewhere in the sky. So star color relates to temperature the opposite of your faucet at home. For stars, blue means hot and red means cool. Well, at least relatively cool. The surface temperature of Antares is about 5,800 degrees Fahrenheit, compared to our sun, which has a surface temperature of about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Antares is cooler, but it's also much, much bigger than our sun. Antares is a red supergiant star. It's so huge that if it were placed in our solar system, it would swallow up all the planets out to Mars. So if Antares marks the heart of Scorpius, you can see the claws extending to the right or to the west, and then a long tail with a stinger at the end. It looks remarkably like a scorpion, although it's also been seen as different things, including Maui's fish hook in Hawaii. Right next door, slightly east from Antares, is Sagittarius the Archer. Now the most recognizable portion of this constellation is the asterism known as the teapot. This marks a relatively small section of the full constellation, which shows a centaur archer, half human, half horse, with the teapot marking the bow and arrow. It's sometimes confused with constellation Centaurus, the centaur, which is mostly seen in the southern hemisphere. The arrow of Sagittarius points toward Antares, the heart of Scorpius. Now this can be seen a couple of ways, as revenge for Scorpius having slain Orion, or to protect nearby Hercules, should Scorpius ever decide to attack. We might recall last summer the planets Saturn and Jupiter were hanging out just to the left of the teapot asterism. This year they've orbited around the sun a bit more, and Saturn is just rising in the southeast about two hours after sunset tonight, and Jupiter follows shortly thereafter. So if you're up, give them a look, and we'll cover them more in depth in August as they reach opposition in the sky. 
Well, coming up this Friday is the new moon, and what better time to travel to a dark sky and take in the beautiful view of the summertime Milky Way. Scorpius and Sagittarius frame a beautiful part of the Milky Way galaxy in the south during the summer months. I like to imagine the beautiful band of the Milky Way as the steam coming out of the spout of the teapot in Sagittarius and rising up across the sky. From dark skies on a moonless night, it's an awesome view. Summertime in the Northern Hemisphere is the best time of the year for seeing the Milky Way because its brightest sections are highest in the sky at this time. You can see a different part of the Milky Way in the Northern winter, but it isn't nearly as bright in the sky. The Milky Way, this band of hazy light across the sky, is our view of our galaxy from the inside. Every star we see with the naked eye is part of the Milky Way galaxy, but we see most of the stars along that band of light, the plane of the Milky Way. Now, if we zoom out, we can get a sense of how the galaxy would look from the outside. The sun is in the disk, and we're about two-thirds of the way out from the center of the Milky Way. If this were a pizza, one slice of pepperoni on it would be a pretty good approximation of how much of the galaxy we see with the naked eye. Now, as big as it is, it's also pretty flat, like a pizza or a pancake. Now, we can see stars in every direction, but there's more of them to be seen as we look along the plane of the galaxy. That's especially true as we look towards the center. Now, the center of our galaxy lies in the direction of Sagittarius, just off the spout of the teapot. It's in this location where scientists have found evidence of a supermassive black hole, millions of times the mass of our sun, around which the entire Milky Way galaxy revolves. Imagine that. We think about our Earth orbiting the sun. Have you ever wondered what the sun orbits around? a supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy. The summertime Milky Way, especially the part just above Sagittarius, holds some incredible treasures to view with binoculars or a telescope. Areas that appear as brighter smudges to the naked eye start to show up as clusters and nebulae with some magnification. Some newer smartphones these days have night sky or even astrophotography modes allowing you to capture some fun point-and-shoot images from a dark sky. So if you've got a hankering for a dark sky this weekend and the first weekend in August are excellent times with no moon in the sky to see the truly dark sky from a good location. Well, that's what we've got for you this episode. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Happy stargazing! and we'll see you next time.